previously on Iceberg Tech. So, yeah, looks like the latest PC hardware releases are going to have the same shortages as consoles for the foreseeable future. Until the shortages end, however, prices on current gen stuff have inflated. What if everything you've heard was a lie? What if, in spite of everything, you could find a current generation graphics card? My name, that's not important. What's important is, should you upgrade? In my last video, I went about recommending a decent value gaming PC for victims of the scalper pandemic. Those who couldn't get either a new 9th gen console or the latest graphics card or CPU they wanted. I stand by this spec and would still recommend it to anyone in early 2021, but obviously given the lack of new parts available right now, some corners had to be cut. What if, after having completed your build, you suddenly had the opportunity to pick up one of the latest generation of graphics cards at a reasonable price? What kind of benefits would there be? Would you be able to enjoy them, or would you find yourself held back by the rest of the system? In this video, I'm taking a more economical build, representing what I think is about the best value on the new parts market right now, and benchmarking it in a few popular titles from different genres. Then I'll be replacing the entry-level GPU with an RTX 3060 Ti and repeating the tests to see if this allegedly £400 graphics card gives a decent performance boost or if it's being held back by the CPU. This time around we have a quad-core Ryzen 3 3100, just 8GB of DDR4 3000 RAM, an A320 motherboard that doesn't permit overclocking, and a GTX 1650 Super. In more sane times, a build like this could set you back about £450, though right now, what with Covid, Ethereum and tariffs, it would more likely cost you one of your less vital organs. While I don't expect that many viewers will have this exact build, I think anyone with a hyper-threaded quad-core, say an i3-10100F, or an older 6-core, like an i5-8400 or the Ryzen 5 2600 featured last time, along with an RX 470, GTX 1060 or similar GPU, should see similar results. To start things off, I benchmarked a few games at high quality settings in 1920x1080 to see how this build can handle them. While I'm not at the most demanding parts of The Witcher 3 here, uh, I am running at high quality settings minus hair works, and as a result I'm seeing a pretty acceptable average of 75 FPS, with frequent dips below 60. The average frame rate in Fortnite looks pretty reasonable here, but it doesn't tell the whole story. The 1% lows reveal a less than optimal experience at high settings. Resident Evil 3 at high settings looks great, but the frame rate is pretty low, with averages below 40 and lows in the mid 20s. I had to run the Warzone test a second time after hearing about a config file fix that improved frame rates. Sure enough, after the adjustment my averages went from mid 70s to low 80s and my minimums went from 40s to over 60. Rocket League is absolutely as smooth as butter on these settings and this is one of the few times I'd say owners of this spec PC wouldn't need to compromise much on quality settings. By contrast, Cyberpunk at high settings is asking far too much of this PC, with frame rates barely hitting half of a TV's refresh rate.
players using normal HD monitors or TVs shouldn't have to compromise at all on quality in Apex Legends, with FPS sticking above 60 almost all of the time. Finally, yes, yes it can. Even the remastered version, and even at high settings, although we're still pretty far from the magic 60 FPS here. By switching out the GTX 1650 Super for an RTX 3060 Ti, we're not only doubling our VRAM, allowing us to use higher resolution textures, but also gaining a newer, more powerful and efficient architecture that supports Nvidia's ray tracing and deep learning super sampling technology. If these terms are new to you, I'll sum them up. Uh, ray tracing means supported games can have more realistic lighting, shadows and reflections. Deep learning super sampling runs supported games at lower resolutions and upscales them using AI deep learning tech, meaning you get the faster frame rates of a lower resolution, but with the minimal loss in apparent image quality. Ignoring this fancy proprietary tech and ruining my chances of getting sample cards from Nvidia in the process, how much extra performance can be had by simply upgrading the GPU? Well, this is a hell of a start. We've effectively twice the frame rate of the GTX 1650 Super now without changing settings at all. We might even be able to turn on Hairworks. This is another huge jump in performance. Uh, there's definitely still room for improvement as the minimums creep a little lower than I like. This may be something that more RAM or a better CPU might account for, but for one single upgrade, this is a big improvement. Now we're talking. RE3 still looks amazing, uh, but now it's also incredibly smooth, never really dropping below 60 FPS. Thanks to the tuned up config file, my averages in Warzone with the 3060 Ti installed made it over 100 with lows in the mid 70s. It's not the most impressive boost over the 1650 Super, which from what I can tell seems to be a bug. Several other gamers are reporting being stuck at about 110 FPS using 3000 series cards, despite them theoretically being capable of much higher frame rates. I may have to revisit this another time after some driver updates. Not that the 1650 Super was lacking, but if you happen to have room in your budget for a high refresh rate monitor, Rocket League will stick pretty close to the 250fps cap almost all the time. I'm told it's possible to remove the cap, though I couldn't get it to work. Cyberpunk 2077 is destiny to be the crisis of the 2020s, so even a 3060 Ti isn't going to give us an optimal experience. Even so, we're still looking at double the performance of the 1650 Super and an infinitely more playable experience. If you're considering a 3060 Ti for Apex Legends, you're probably going to want to upgrade your monitor to take full advantage. After uncapping the frame rate by adding the following command line to the advanced launch options, we managed to get a pretty enormous FPS boost over the 1650 Super. Finally, Crisis Remastered scales pretty well, with roughly 100% higher averages and 50% higher minimums than the 1650 Super, though, honestly, I haven't played much of this, but I think I prefer the non-remastered version. So that looks uh, pretty straightforward, right? From the chart, we're seeing that this upgrade should net you over double the performance with the same settings in some games and a pretty sizable improvement in the rest. However, this isn't the complete picture. I kind of stacked the deck in the RTX card's favour by using high settings. 
If you have a GTX 1650 Super or similar card, you can always get around most of the frame rate issues by jumping into the menu and dropping the graphics settings. In single player games like Resident Evil 3, Witcher 3 or Crisis, whether or not you drop the quality settings can be pretty much down to your own preference for smooth gameplay versus improved visuals. In faster paced competitive games, turning the settings down in order to gain a competitive advantage is pretty much a no brainer. Also, while upgrading the card saw massive FPS boosts in the more intensive games like Cyberpunk, Resident Evil 3 and Crisis, other games didn't scale quite so well. Granted, these are the more competitive games, and unless you're planning on getting a 240Hz monitor, we're pretty much splitting hairs, but the full potential of the graphics card is being held back by the CPU. The motherboard in this system doesn't support the newest Zen 3 CPUs, and it can't be used for overclocking, so alas, the only options available would be to change out the CPU for something with a higher core count, like for example a Ryzen 5 3600X or 3700X, or to swap the A320 motherboard for a newer model, paired with something like a Ryzen 5 5600X or an Intel i5 10600KF. So, too long didn't watch version. Is upgrading your entry level graphics card to an RTX 3060 Ti worth the money? If you have a CPU equivalent to or better than a Ryzen 3 3100, you should get a significant jump in performance over virtually any entry level or previous generation high end graphics cards. If you have an older CPU, like an older quad core Intel i5 or early Ryzen 3, you might find the performance benefit not quite as substantial. Let me know if you'd like to see this card in a lower end system in the comments. This GPU is currently in my main gaming and editing PC, and I do plan to make a follow up video soon where I compare the results from here with those of a Ryzen 5 5600X. Hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss that one. If you found the video useful or entertaining or at the very least mildly distracting, consider donating to my Patreon linked in the description. I managed to get through the whole video without using the word bottleneck, so that's got to be worth at least a click of the like button. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.